Hello and welcome to episode 7 of our series on building a Java app to access a Jira REST APIs. Earlier in the series we created a Java app that logs into Jira, it fetches the J session ID and then it uses that J session ID to authenticate a request that pulled data from an API. And in fact, we swapped out, uh, I think uh, we ultimately used three different APIs. But in this episode, we'll be converting that data into CSV format. As I've said before, the JSON that we're parsing has a very flat structure. It's just an array of records where each record can be thought of as a row in a spreadsheet. So we'll need to step through that array, get each record, and write it out as a CSV string. There is one issue to very slightly complicate things. So I want to put these columns in a specific order, uh, regardless of how they came across in the JSON or how our JSON parsing library has arranged things in its generic objects. To do that, I'm going to create a list of column names and then I'll iterate over that list. And to do that, I'll need an iterator and, and a list. Um, those are both in the Java Util libraries, so I'll import that right now. This is our script as we left off a few minutes ago when we did the last episode. We'll import java.util. Let's just take them all. We can make it more specific later. Then we can go down to our function format as CSV. So what does that need? It really only needs the, the JSON data that we had from before. We will add that and we'll send that data on down. And then in our function, we will set it up to receive it. And I just give it the same name down here, JSON data. Um, because we're going to be working with CSV data, and uh, it's nice to know which is which here. To start coding this up, we will create a try-catch block. Try catch exception ex. And inside here, we'll add our error handling code, and then we'll add some debug output too. So I'm going to copy my error handling code from down from the previous function and rename it. This is on the principle that each function is responsible for printing its own error message. And then if there was an error also, we don't want to return data. We want to return this message, this flag error, which goes up to main and is checked before we run each one. But after we do the CSV data, it'll be checked. And if it's error, then we will set our global uh, errors occurred flag to true and not execute anything else. And then when we get down here to the bottom, we'll see that it was true and we will print the failure. That gives us uh, the the error message printed out, and then basically execution stops after that point. The only thing we get after that is a is a big message that says failure. Let's start coding this up now. Oh, we forgot their debug output. I'll comment all of these out later, but right now, before any function returns anything, we are going to say w what we're working with. CSV data. CSV data. Now we can uh, we can try coding up this parsing function. Now we've already done parsing to get the J session ID earlier. For the first step of that is to instant what? Um, put it in the wrong place, didn't I? There it is. It goes in the catch block. So up here in the try block, we the first thing we do is we create a JSON parser. Parser, and we'll just call it parser equals a new JSON parser. And you know what? I'll create a JSON array as well to hold our records. JSON array called records. And that will be null for now. Did I do that? I did. There we go. And we'll also need, um, so this, this data will come across, we'll have headers, and then we will have data. So let's just create those as separate strings. call that header row. Header row and data rows. Now the next thing we need to do is populate that list of column names like I said before. So this is, it'll be a list in the end. It'll be a list, a string, and I'll call it call names. But as far as in, in loading it up with things, I think I'll do that as uh, loaded, calling its, its constructor which takes a string array. I'll create a string array and I'll call it array column names, and it will equal this and this. And we'll open and close it. But then to get all these names, now this is where I can use the the handy feature that all these all this data is available as a manual download. We'll go to reports. 
we'll, we'll get the, uh, the column names. Intelligence export report. We don't need to use any particular date. Oh, we do need to use some dates, don't we? Because I have no, no data from yesterday. We've got to go all the way back to December. And we'll do December 1 through what, 16. That's enough. We'll choose a download format. Let's try CSV. Oh, LibreOffice, yes. Um, you know what? Let's just go to the show in Finder. You can see all my downloads. What has he been downloading? Um, right click, open with brackets once again. There we are. Take that all the way down to there. Okay, um, from that, let's go back to our automate and we will pop it in right there. So that's how we format them in the in the reports that come out. Now one th change I do want to make is I want my big text fields here to be at the end. I've got one for comment and one for work look. So I'll just put those at, together at the end. Oops, I put it before that. That way the, the long things will be at the very end. Now that we have a string array that's populated with all the column names in the order that we want them, we can uh, load this up as arrays dot as list. And now we have populated our column names. At this point we can go ahead and very very easily just by iterating through this let's create our header row. Could just use that as the header row if I escaped all of those double quotes and things. But let's just iterate through our list and tack them on. We'll say header row plus equals call names dot get i. Um, and then we'll add that uh, that comma on after it. Um, so that'll do great, but at the end of all this we'll have a comma at the end of our header row, and we don't want that. So header row equals header row whoops dot replace all. Um, this uh, we want a comma at the end of the line and we will replace it with a new line. That's it, that's our header row built. Now we'll get the data values for this operation, uh, so we'll need to iterate over the records, and then in each record, iterate over the columns of data that are in our list. So we'll start off by using the parser to parse the JSON data that we've received into an object. We already created our parser, so we need an object. Let's just call it object equals parser dot parse JSON data. And then we need to convert that raw object into a JSON object. That's just a cast operation. I could have done it in the line above, but I will cast it here. JSON object object. Now we need to extract the records objects as a JSON array to populate our records object there. We'll say JSON. No, we've already declared it, haven't we? So records is going to equal a JSON array. JSON value dot get records. Very simple. Ah, but then we need to create an iterator. Iterator. To iterate over this list, we'll call it iter records equals records 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 um, dot it or a tour while iter records has next while there is something to do here we'll get a JSON object and that is this record cast as a JSON object from iter records dot next and then we will create an empty string to hold the results as we convert this to CSV. So string this, what will we call it? We'll call it, um, just call it string record. And right now it'll be empty. 
but now we'll start stepping through those column names and filling it up. This I'll do for int i equals zero i is less than call names dot size, just like we did above when we populated the header row. In fact, I could have copied and pasted it. This call name is going to be call names dot get i. That is the value. First one will be record type. And then we'll use that name when we parse this rec to parse uh, to parse it out of this record. String record is going to plus equal. We'll give it a uh, delimit it. We'll, um, we'll wrap it in double quotes and we'll call this string this record dot get this call name. And then we will finish up the wrapping that we've just done. Put a comma at the after it, and separate it from the next column, and that's that. Now at the end here, once we've populated this whole string record with all of the values from all of these fields, we're going to have a comma at the end again. This will be just like we did up here with header row. Down here we will do the string record equals string record dot replace all and we will get a comma at the end of a line and we'll replace it with a new line character. Once we've cleaned it up like that, we can go ahead and put it on our data rows. We'll append it to data rows. Record. So that's that. Now, oh, we can concatenate the two of these things. What's our final thing called? CSV data equals header row plus data rows. We are ready to return CSV data unless an error occurred, in which case we'll get that error message. And let's just see if it works. Save. Where have I screwed up? I can't have done that much typing without screwing up somewhere. Oh, look at that. It doesn't like a lot of things, does it? Um, hmm. What if we swap that out and swap that out? Put that after it. Hmm. Does that look a little better? Let's see. Now it likes it. Yes. Let's try running it. Four, five, six. CSV data. Okay, we've turned our Java into a nice CSV spreadsheet compatible form. In our next uh, episode, we really have only one thing to do, and that is to write this to disk. So we'll um, start work on this very last function here, write to file. And I will see you then. Thanks a lot. Bye.